Hello everyone, welcome back to the Logical SMP once again. <clears throat> Today, sadly, the next update is coming. Well, I guess it's quite fun that the next update is coming to Minecraft. But that means we're going to get ready to move on to another season. So this world, we only have a month left-ish to keep working. We like to go a month after the update. So I have decided to get some loose projects finished. So we're going to start here, right in Moss Isley, our most known structure or base on the server. And we have three or four, depending if we're actually going to do something with this spot over here, of buildings to finish. But first, we're going to need all the resources to do so. Mainly birch and sandstone are most notable for this. And I only have about a stack and a half of birch, which means we're going to have to go do some collecting. And sandstone, now we're, we're doing all right, but that's definitely not going to be enough. So let's collect some shulker boxes and let's go do some gathering. So at this point, I've collected quite a bit of birch wood, as we can see in here. And through this, I have realized I have done a lot of birch gathering throughout this season. For example, you gotta see how much I have just completely decimated this forest. Okay, from this ocean here, we follow it all the way, all the way. I even started replanting a bit because it's just, I decimated the entire birch forest. This was all birch forest. Just a long strip of just nothingness. Now if you thought the birch forest was the only thing I decimated, well look at my sandstone pit. This is one of many. All this, this is, isn't even most of most Isaac, because most of it is what I got from destroying the land around to make room for terraforming. So this is like a third of Moss Isley, just a third. All of this. And in what was about a fourth the time, I've collected the same amount of sandstone as I did birch. Sandstone is so nice that you just mine it instantly, even without a beacon. Now, yeah, we got a full sugar box and a little extra. We do need uh, three layers of sandstone. Since it's around the end of the season, I can basically take all of this dried kelp and then I can just throw it all into the system manually. Uh, well, at least we can get some dry some dry sandstone. Smooth sandstone. Sandstone's already dry. Yeah, we're going to get some smooth sandstone in here. Okay, so with today's time lapse, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to go with some commentary. So right here, you will see uh, what I'm building is a governmental style building. I didn't have any purpose for this spot, so I just put something there. And next, we move on to what is the Jedi Temple. And I know there isn't a Jedi Temple on Tatooine or in Mos Eisley, but I thought it'd be fun to build one anyways, because it's a classic Star Wars thing. It had to be done. And we're also just building up the walls right now. We'll come back with the details later. This is kind of my standard building procedure. Always start with the walls. And make sure you do the texturing as you build up the walls, because it's much more difficult to come back later. So you can see I kind of section them off into four different pillars. It's kind of inspired by Vader's palace. And also the slope is about a five blocks, but I do end up messing that up. So we're going to go back and see if we can fix that later. Right here you can see the Moss Eisley Cantina. You can't have Moss Eisley without the cantina. It's the most classic bit there. So obviously I'm going to put the most detail into this as I can and also make it most true to Star Wars. We start with the dome, but I end up making it larger because there's actually an interior partly there, which looks down into like the bar of the cantina. And of course, I build all the typical tarps that shadow the area for where you eat or take a sip of your blue milk. You know what I mean? Okay, then I start building some uh, chairs and tables outside. Now we go on to some more fancy detailing back at the governmental building. Now we build a dome. And all these interiors are fully decked out. You don't really see much of that. On the back of this building, I tried building the best uh, Imperial logo I can, but I, it kind of looks terrible if you just look at it. it. It doesn't look that great. But you know, it's kind of hard to do that with limited blocks. Of course, I do my standard assets I use. I put them on the building, looks nice. 
Then I put all those ropes with the hanging signs. It looks kind of like cloth just hanging from ropes. It adds a lot of life to the city. I remove the supports for one building and put in a pit because I want some different uh, height levels around the city. And then I just put some stands in there and it looks beautiful. And that is a time lapse complete. We have three more structures around Moss Isley, in turn causing more lag. For example, I only have average 50 frames a second. Normally I got 100 before that time lapse. And also there's a bit more detailing on this structure because I completely forgot to hit time lapse for the finishing of this, which is our Moss Isley Jedi Temple. Now, this is the main lag causer because I have a something down there, which you can probably take a guess at. I can't reveal it yet though. Upstairs, these this spiral staircase. When we come to the Jedi room, they got like a mini archive, got some controls. Got a big block of kyber and a meditation point. Now we're going downstairs, we can go to the next structure, which is this way. Which is kind of just a government building. This structure does finish off this area nicely. It feels much more enclosed. The only issue is it's kind of just a big cube with a little chunk taken out of it. But it's gonna do fine. Inside, since it's a government building, we got people operating at a front big front desk get the back room with money and then we got a meeting room upstairs which I think turned out pretty well though we do have some uh, half couch chairs because why not then the last structure is arguably the most important structure I have ever built the Moss Isley Cantina kaboom maybe an even an aerial view here is the Cantina the most iconic place in Star Wars and we're gonna enter right here. And as you enter, you can see a bunch of tables around the sides. You can see this place where like people wait, take your order. There's also a bar, some classic blue milk right there. Who wouldn't want blue milk? We gotta update the map as always. And that's kind of like a puzzle to put this thing back together. Center. Top corner. And boom. That is Moss Eisley. I will say the Jedi Temple looks like chaos on this map. Look at that. <laughs> I love how the cantina looks on the map though. That looks brilliant. Now that we got all those buildings finished in Moss Eisley, let's finish the outside of Moss Eisley. Starting with the Star Destroyer, just up there. Pro like, oh, what, what more could we do? Well, the problem is it doesn't look scrappy at all. It just looks like a Star Destroyer that's crashed. So we're going to fix that by blowing some holes in this thing. How do we blow holes? With TNT. Just go buh and... Now you got a hole, and I can put some scrappiness on this. You know, maybe expand the hole just a little bit. Maybe a bit of that too. Ow. These are all very square shaped. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Let's put one at the very top. That was a bad idea. Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh, no. Now, there's also gonna be a lot cut out at the base, because it makes sense that I would fall off in a Star Destroyer crash. But I'm gonna do that all by pickaxe, because TNT's a little too unsafe. Off camera, I have added some sand along the edges to look like the Star Destroyer is burying into the ground. I've also scrapped up a bit along the part that's touching all that sand. But there's a huge problem that some of you may not notice. This does not make sense. 
There's got to be some, like, crevice that was carved out when this thing landed. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> let's take what the underside of this would look like if I built it. Which goes like that, and it comes back. And we're going to carve it this way through this. But the problem is, this part comes back up, creating an overhang. Now that's not realistic, because sand would fall. So we're actually going to create still kind of a V shape. And it just goes back that way. And now, I have finished the entire Star Destroyer. We got this back pit, exactly as I described it earlier. Now it appears a lot more like the Star Destroyer crashed here. You take a look over here. Hey look, it's like a wedge, a cut out, sand fell back in. And not only that, I have also added the scrappiness to the outside of the Star Destroyer. So we can see we got a bit of that here. A bit up here as well. And a bit down here. Look at that. Oh, and I even scrapped the back because obviously that would be pretty destroyed during a crash landing. It's quite beautiful. There was unfortunately no workaround behind putting torches in the engine. But honestly, it looks like they're still trying to be active from a lower angle. So, I'll allow it. You know, so I can put a frog light just at the back center. Anyways, now we have literally just one more project to get. And that is Camino. That one has been left unfinished for quite a while. Okay, so Camino has changed quite a bit since the last time I've shown on camera. So this is what it looks like at the moment. Got a lot done. Obviously last time we built the Venator. Yeah. But there are a few more things I have also built since the Venator, which is the entire underside. We got that all curved out. We're gonna have to replicate this on top. And another issue is, honestly, I don't care the models are spawning under here, but we gotta fi finish two of these support stilts because that is not yet completed. I'll just get that done. We're just gonna time lapse the top here though. Or should I even time lapse? Yeah, we're gonna do a time lapse. We're gonna get the top done. It's going to take a good while for me, but it's just going to be a few minutes for you. So just enjoy the good music and let's start that time lapse. 